All right, I've pulled all my liners out. And this is liner number six. Uh, you can see that it's quite dulled out. There's no cross hatch in it anymore. This is the one that was leaking a tiny, tiny bit of coolant. It must have been leaking for a very long time. Uh, this is number five. You can still see there's a lot of cross hatching in here. And uh, you can see that it's, uh, or there's cross hatching all the way down through this thing quite well. I mean, it looks beautiful. So the insides of these things after 900,000 miles just look really, really nice. It's kind of hard to see in the camera, but I can tell you they, they look really good. Uh, you know, I can't believe how little wear there is in these things. This engine would have lasted a lot, lot longer, uh, you know, if uh, if the head hadn't worn. We do have, you know, uh, valve stem wear and a little bit of oil leakage on the valve stems. And, of course, we had that leaky um, injector cup, et cetera, et cetera. I'm glad I tore the motor down. I'm glad that I found this. This is a wax. This is not rust. In the camera, it looks like rust. I can feel it. It feels like crayon. It, it, it's really soft, like a wax. And it's the, it's the same color as rust. And there's some pitting on my liners. You know, there's some actual, there's actual pitting. Uh, there's some pitting on the liners combined with this, but it's mostly just this brown wax. It's just nasty. And it's kind of embedded in the pitting. So uh, it's, just, it's just really bad. All right, with all the liners out, <clears throat> You can clearly see that that brown, nasty, waxy, dried coolant substance has inundated this entire engine block. It's kind of hard to see, and the light's not on in here too well. But uh, we're going to have to clean all this out, and uh, I'm just going to do the best I can. I think I'm going to reuse. That's just too much work for me. You know, the truck's made for work and making us our living. I'm just going to clean all this up as best I can. Uh, and get to as much of it as I can and we're gonna put new liners in it anyways and uh, we're gonna put a new head on it so it shouldn't be too bad engine never had any overheating problems it never had any problems with it you know getting hot the oil getting hot etc etc I might buy a new oil cooler for it considering I see this I don't know we'll see but um, I think I'm gonna just try to clean it up and reuse it and uh, go from there because we never really had a problem with the motor and I don't see where this waxy substance is going to give us a problem. I mean, if we can just get it cleaned up and uh, most of it out of here. So we'll just do it that way and go from there. Okay, so I've got all my liners out. They look pretty bad on the outside from that bad coolant. And uh, I've cleaned up my block a little bit on the inside. And I just wanted to show this uh, right here. I took a piece of cardboard and I... Set it on top of one of these liners with it upside down. This is upside down. This is the bottom. And I marked it with a pen. And then I cut it out with a pair of scissors. And then I taped it over on both sides. Put a little bit of electrical tape on here around the edge and just mashed it down. Poked a hole and put a zip tie, a real tight zip tie in there. And what this is, is this will go down in where the cylinders are or where the, in the cylinder block It'll go below this ridge because it's this size and not this size. And it'll slide nice and snug down in the hole so that when I clean or if I'm working or I do any machining, because I'm getting ready to do machining too, I'm going to counterbore my blocks or my, my block. Uh, the shavings don't get down onto the crank and down in the block. You know, they'll stay on top of this thing. So um, uh, that's how I'm going to do that. And that's how I'm going to keep everything clean. Is, is, uh, I would recommend making six of these. I made one, but, you know, uh, I move it from hole to hole. But you, you probably should make six of them. If you, um, I probably should have made six. Anyway, that's, uh, that's what I'm going to do. Let me show how this goes in there. And here's my block. I got it somewhat cleaned up. And... Uh, you can see, so I got something to grab on with my fingers. This slides right down in here nice and snug. Right down below this, this, this lip. Right down into the flat area. So now you can do whatever you need to do to clean or any machining or anything like that that you need to do. So that's what I did and that's why I made this. Uh, so I don't have to worry about shavings or anything getting down in there. 
Okay, the reason why I need to counterbore my cylinders is because uh, when I turn these over, you can turn them all over. Uh, that's the way they go in the engine. If you turn them upside down, uh, and if you also look, you can see right here below the water line that this is dry. This, this ran dry. This didn't get coolant on it. There's the seal for the coolant, so it didn't even get past the, the step. This one ran dry, uh, didn't get coolant, did not get past the step. Same here, but it started to, on number five, it's upside down, or there's number four. Well, it didn't on number four either, okay. Uh, okay, yeah, it started to on number five. You can see it here. Uh, I've got it turned upside down. And it obviously did it on number six a little bit. It didn't get past the seal. There's the seal. It didn't go past the seal. Uh, that's just some discoloring. So it wasn't leaking, but uh, you can see it got past the step. And if you look at number five really close right here, you can see a little bit of uh, fretting where the liner sits in the block over on the, uh, this would be the uh, exhaust side. So you can see a little bit of fretting on there, right there. And if you look at number six, uh, you can see it as well. You spin it around in the light here. And let me see, right here, you can see it's pretty good. Number six got it really good, okay? So it's quite a little bit of fretting right there happened on number six. And that's why the coolant got past it on the step. The, the, um, the O-ring didn't fail, so it kept it held back. But uh, since we have a little bit of fretting, I went ahead and measured uh, the block. And when I measured the block, I get up here. Okay, here's the inside of number six cylinder. And this edge right down here, this little edge, this little machined edge right here, you can see, it's kind of hard to tell, but you can see that there's some fretting in the engine block just a little bit right in here, right on this edge. And uh, I measured it from the top of the block down to the where the liner sits on that ledge, okay, on each side. And this one on this side, uh, is sitting at 4.728. This side over here is sitting at 7, 4.731. Uh, so it's about three thousandths of an inch low. It's just low enough that I need to be concerned about it because it may start uh, causing the liner to uh, lean or leak or uh, allow it to vibrate later on. The liner height, uh, when I checked it on all the cylinders, was uh, 0.010. It was perfect all the way across all the liners. Like I said, the, the liner itself wasn't leaking. The seal was holding it. But uh, that's definitely not good. It probably will not last a million miles if I try to put it back the way it is and just throw new liners in it. So I'm going to have to counterbore uh, the block to fix that. And um, I guess some, some shops would probably uh, bring it down three thousandths of an inch and then bring all of them down to 0 .008 uh, or 0 .007 which will be the minimum that Cummins allows but that's really a cheesy way of fixing something uh, you take a high risk of it you know uh, losing a liner with it all the way down that low so I'm gonna do the right thing I bought 32 thousandths brass shims and um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna machine uh, all these steps or all these uh, um, shoulders where the liners sit. I'm going to machine them all uh, to compensate for the 30, 32 thousand shims that I bought. But while I'm at it, I'm going to go, going to go ahead and raise the liner height uh, from 10 to 14. And what that'll do is that'll make it stronger. That's the upper edge of you know what Cummins says you're allowed. I know I've seen guys build engines at uh, 16 or even 18. I know um, that. Uh, uh, I know of one engine that was built, 871, that was built for 1,500 horsepower that runs quite well. Uh, and it, they set the height at 18 to keep the engine, to hold the engine, the engine together, to keep the liners from vibrating. So I know people have gotten away with as much as 18. So I'm going to go ahead and set it to 14. And because uh, I'm not building this thing for a whole bunch of power. And uh, I was told that it won't do that a second time uh, in the future with it all the way up at 14. So. I'm going to go ahead and uh, counter bore it down to uh, 32 more thousandths minus um, uh, 4, 
which would be, you know, that would set the liner height instead of 10, it would set it to 14. So um, let's, uh, let's have some fun with that. Okay, I have my shims. Uh, I got these from Apex. Uh, I bought the brass ones because I was told they expand quite well under the heat. They'll expand faster than the steel and they'll help hold the liner together uh, tighter under high heat or um, high compression. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the brass liners instead of the steel liners. I don't like it. A lot of guys like the steel liners or the stainless liners. I'm, I went with brass. And um, the new liners already have a brass shim that is 32,000. So it's going to have about 60, 64 thousandths of brass. Um, and it should be okay. It should be fine. And um, like I say, the, the brass is supposed to expand quicker than the steel under heat and compression to help. Uh, prevent that problem anyway so we're going to try that out we're going to put that in our engine and um, what we're going to use to counterbore it is I have this lovely tool uh, I've got from um, I think it was Monaco tool I bought this 50164 uh, setting master which I have uh, here it, it's not really required to do the counterbore all it is is a uh, it's a precision ledge where you can zero out your dial indicator to the height of the counterbore, and uh, I think it's 4.725 uh, is the height on that uh, 7250, and then you can use that to uh, preset your dial indicators. You know if you're going to use one of these height gauges or dial indicator gauges for your height for checking and setting your height, and then I have the Monaco uh, tool kit here. Um, part number 50145 mid stop counterboard tool for Cummins ISX and um, I bought that thing quite a while uh, last year I think in anticipation for you know doing my engine or helping somebody else that might need it so I've got this whole counterboard kit here and um, we're going to use it to uh, counterboard the block 